So, arcane slash bleed builds in Elden Ring have become incredibly popular since patch 1.03 when they fixed the stat scaling for bleed builds. We've had a look at the Rivers of Blood, we've had a look at loads of different builds based on bleed, and this one is taking a look at a weapon that is absolutely fantastic. And when I say that, if I come over to this enemy right here, and I use the skill on this weapon, it deals a lot of damage, and it will also, providing I don't get eaten, it will even poise break and leave your enemies on the floor ready for a crit. So right there, I have just absolutely demolished that enemy. So welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video, we are taking a look at a weapon called Eleonora's Pole Blade. And just quickly before we do get into it, if you're not currently subbed to the channel, make sure you do sub turn notifications on. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. All support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to support me further as a creator, then check out the links in the description. And let's get into it. So, taking a look at Eleonora, I, I don't know if it's pronounced Eleonora, it might be Eleonora, but I'm going to go with Eleonora's Pole Blade. I've got it up to a plus 9, it's got some decent damage to it, it scales off strength, dex and arcane, not so much your strength, the requirements are very minuscule, you need 12 strength, 21 dex and 19 arcane, it's got a 77 blood loss build up, and it's skill is fantastic. Not only that, if you two hand this weapon, the move set is so much fun. You'll see my stats on the right hand side. I haven't leveled specifically for this because otherwise my decks would be a lot higher because it's going to primarily scale with decks and then the arcane is for the blood loss build up. And taking a look at the description, the unique skill is called Bloodblade Dance. You leap at a foe to perform a flurry of tornado-like attacks. You follow up with an additional input to perform an attack that ends in an evasive maneuver, so you can do more with it. So if we come out here and we come back to this guy that we've just killed... And providing he doesn't hit me... So you would have seen it there. You do the normal attack, so if I just come over here, I'll quickly switch it to daytime. I just, I think the blood effect looks really nice in the dark. So if we do a standard left trigger, I've only pressed it once and it just does all those attacks. Whereas if I press it a couple of times, it does an extra attack and it does a backwards dash. So you can get out of the way of an enemy attack as well. So I would say this is... I mean, Rivers of Blood is really, really powerful, but this is just as powerful because you're dealing a lot of successive attacks. Therefore, you can use something like the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia. It's going to be based on a blood loss buildup for a bleed build. So there are lots of different things you can use with this to make it even more powerful. As I said, it scales on dex. My dex is only 24, so it's not going to be that powerful at its base, purely because my stat is really low. But Eleonora's Pole Blade, in order to get your hands on it, you don't have to do the your request like a lot of people will say. I've actually been locked out of doing it because I progressed too far into the game. I've tried having a look in all the different locations. I can't find Eura. So on this character, I can't get Raptor of the Mists, which we have previously covered in a video. But once you do make it up to the Altus Plateau region, so you might want to go the Grand Lift of Dectus way, you might want to go through the Ravine Veiled Village. If you do want to go Grand Lift of Dectus, then what you want to do is head to Fort Faroth, which is down here in Kaelid, and grab one of the halves of the medallion from there. And then over here, you have Fort Height, so it's just there on the map. It's, it's literally just east of where you start at the first step. But in Fort Height, you'll find the other half of the medallion that is required to access the Grand Lift of Dectus and bring you up into the Altus Plateau region. When you do make it up here, if you come to the Second Church of Marika and you go inside the church and you just run around for a minute, you're going to be invaded by Eleonora. Once you take her down, you will get a purifying crystal tear, which will help you out with a mog boss fight. But not only that, you will get Eleonora's pole blade. This weapon is so much fun to use, just purely based on the left trigger skill itself. So with this and putting it into a build, 
you could run absolutely anything. I love the, if we take a look at the move set. So if I just one hand it, right bumper, light attacks. Yeah, they're quite cool. A heavy attack with one hand is very nice. And then if we switch it after that attack to two hand, and you have a look at the right bumper, you do a lot of quick successive attacks. And then with the right trigger, you're going to do a lot heavier. It seems a lot heavier than the standard right trigger. I don't know if it is actually any different. No, I think right trigger is the same. Or is at least very similar. But what I would recommend with this is using a seal in your offhand. So any that scales with maybe Faith or Arcane, it depends what your stats are like specced into. But because my Faith is 55, I've got the Earth Tree seal. Because it's not going to, like, there's nothing, like, if you take a look at the, at the Dragon Communion seal, it boosts incantations. It boosts incantations, it boosts incantations. That's what they all do as their passive effects. And the Golden Vell incantation, because it boosts your attack and defense by a certain percentage, you can't buff it. Those passive effects do not work. So run any seal that you want, as long as you can scale with it. That's why I've gone with the S-tier Faith scaling with the Earth Tree seal. And you're just wanting to get your hands on Golden Vow as the incantation. So if you have a look here, Golden Vow increases your attack and defense for yourself and for your allies. It does cost 47 FP, so I'd recommend putting a few points into mind. But once you've put your points into mind, you've got some in Dex, you've got some in Arcane. With the build, it's just going to get better the higher you get your Dexterity, and obviously Arcane for the bleed. But in terms of the Talismans, because you're going to run Golden Vow, it's going to boost your attack in general when you're using the Pole Blade. If you can get your hands on the White Mask, if you have killed Mog, you will not be able to do it. You'll have to wait until New Game Plus. But if you can get your hands on the White Mask, there's a whole video for it on the channel. That is going to stack with the Talisman we are using, and it's going to boost your blood loss even further. So the build will become better and better and better. In terms of your Flask of Wondrous Physic, I don't have a clue what to put in here. So I've just put the Dexterity Not Crystal tier to temporarily boost my dex. And I've got the Green Burst one, which will boost my stamina recovery speed, because we're going to be doing a lot of attacks in quick succession. So the talismans I would recommend for this is Shard of Alexander. You have to complete Alexander's quest. It will greatly boost the attack power of your skills. With the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, it greatly raises your attack power with successive attacks. With Lord of Blood's Exaltation, blood loss in the area will increase your attack power. So that's the one you pair with the White Mask. You get a big buff when there's blood loss in the area. So you're going to deal a lot more damage. And then Ritual Sword, it raises the attack power when your health is full. So it might not always be a good idea to run Ritual Sword. But because it's boosting your attack power, those first hits you're getting on enemies are going to be a lot more beneficial. And Ritual Sword is actually obtained because with Shard of Alexander, it is the Alexander quest, Iron Fist Alexander. Rotten Wing Sword Insignia is from the Millie Sent quest, if you assist her towards the end of it. Lord of Blood's Exaltation is from the Lendal Catacombs up in the capital. White Mask will be from Mogwin Palace or Mogwin Dynasty, whatever you call that area. There's going to be some nameless White Masks that come and invade you. And one of them will drop you that mask. As I said, you can't kill Mog, otherwise you can't get the mask until New Game Plus. Then you've got the Pole Blade up at the Second Church of Marika. Any seal that you want to run just to use Golden Vow and grab yourself Golden Vow. And then with Ritual Sword up in the Altus Plateau as well. Up at Erd Tree Gazing Hill, you have Lux Ruins. There's a boss in Lux Ruins, like you go down these stairs underneath the ruins. And you've got a boss there, take that boss down and you'll get the Ritual Sword Talisman. So all of it is going to be boosting your attack power when you've got full health, when there's blood loss in the area, when you're using like successive attacks, and also when you're using skills, which is left trigger, or like L2 on the PlayStation. It's the weird like tornado-like hits, the unique skill for the weapon. And then if you pair it with the White Mask, you're going to be dealing a, like a massive amount of damage, especially if your dex is high. So, if we come over to this enemy again, I'm going to do a normal left trigger, try and land every single hit. And I failed, 
I always fail with showcases. Now, well, there we go. Two left triggers and the guy's dead. If I then come back and I rest at the site of grace, if I then use my seal to pop golden vow, you'll see the yellow aura around my character. And I've got the red one there because of the ritual sword. So because my health is full. If I come over and attack this guy again... I've just done him in one spin. Popping Golden Vow and starting with full health. That's the sort of power you're looking at with this build. I hit that guy for 5k damage with one left trigger move. This pole blade is fantastic if these rams go away. It is fantastic for a bleed build, a dex build, and it's a lot of fun with the moves. As I said, your left trigger is insane, and then if you double up on it, so you press it again, you do a backward step, so you kind of evade like an enemy attack. And then if you two-hand the weapon, the move set with your right bumper is really, really cool. And it's a lot of successive attacks. So the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia is going to greatly raise your attack power because you're attacking time and time and time again. So that was a look at a build for Eleonora's Pole Blade. I'll be back with other weapons and stuff for the game. I've got a massive playlist full of videos on the channel if you're interested to watch more. And what we're going to do is leave that video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.